the Omnipod 5 from Insulet or the T-Slim X2 from Tandem? Which of these two insulin pumps is better? I've used the T-Slim X2 for three years and the Omnipod 5 for the last four months. And I can honestly tell you they are both amazing, but they are also very different. This video will help you decide which of these two insulin pump systems is better for you. And I will also share which one I pick. So let's get right into it. What's great about the Omnipod 5 and the T-Slim X2 is that each of these insulin pumps has an algorithm which works with a continuous glucose monitor and it can automatically adjust your insulin dose based on your blood glucose levels. We'll talk about the algorithms in a minute but first we need to look at how these two pumps look and feel. The T-Slim X2 weighs about 4 ounces or 113 grams. It's about 3 inches long, 2 inches high and 0.6 inches deep. It's a tube pump, so it uses a disposable plastic cartridge and the insulin is delivered through an infusion set and a cannula placed under your skin. The Omnipod 5 is a completely different animal because it's a tubeless patch pump. It's a lot smaller and lighter. The weight is less than one ounce or 26 grams and it's about 1.5 inches long, 2 inches wide and 0.6 inches deep. While you need to have both of these pumps on you pretty much 24 seven, the experience of using a tube pump versus a tubeless pump is completely different. With the T-Slim you can easily disconnect from the pump to take a shower, go for a swim or have some fun time in bed with your partner and connect again when you're done with that. The pot is literally stuck to your skin 24 seven. You can't take it off and put it back on whenever you feel like it. And it's probably a reason why the Omnipod 5 is waterproof. You can shower and swim with it. It allows you to dip in 25 feet of water for up to 60 minutes without damaging the pot. T-Slim X2 is only water resistant up to three feet for up to 30 minutes. So I recommend disconnecting from from it before any kind of water activities. Just keep in mind that whenever you disconnect from the pump you're basically without insulin which makes sense. Now I love how much smaller and more discreet the Omnipod 5 is. It's a lot easier to hide under your clothes although it does create a little bump and when someone takes a closer look they will see the pot outline. Now if you ever use the T-Slim X2 you will agree with me that it's almost impossible to hide completely because the pump and the tubing are just way too bulky. Plus I can't even count how many times the T-Slim slid out of my pocket and got stuck under the car seat in my car or how many times I got hooked to a door handle in my apartment with the tubing. This just doesn't happen with a patch pump. Now these two pumps also provide a completely different experience when I sleep. With the T-Slim you might wake up and find yourself with the tubing rolled around various body parts. I'm not a wild sleeper so I never ripped out the cannula in my sleep but it's not impossible. With an Omnipod you won't have this problem because there is no tube but the pot on your body might bother you quite a bit depending on your sleeping position. When I have the pot on my arm or on my leg I basically can't really use that side of the body for sleeping and I have to sleep or I have to lie on the other side of the body or on my back. So it can be a bit uncomfortable if you like to change the position a lot during the sleep. With the T-Slim I used to place the pump next to me or in my pocket and that allowed me to choose the sleeping position more freely than with the Omnipod. Another little thing that I loved about T-Slim and that I really missed when I switched to Omnipod was the screen light. Anytime and anywhere I woke up in the middle of the night in the complete darkness I always had the pump screen light and I could easily find my way to the bathroom without having to turn on the light or any other lights in the apartment and waking up any other people. So the screen light was actually extremely helpful for me. You know, it's the little things. Now on the other hand, the overall freedom of movement with the Omnipod is amazing. Not having to be hooked up with the tube and moving freely during sports and all kinds of other activities is such a freeing experience. Another advantage of Omnipod 5 is that when when you travel you don't need to carry a whole lot of supplies. Each pot is stored in a relatively small and flat package along with the syringe you need to fill the pot with insulin. With T-Slim X2 you will need to pack infusion sets, cartridges, syringes and needles so you will end up carrying a lot more supplies. One thing to consider when deciding between these two systems is that the pots are fully disposable and you will have to replace them every three days. So once in three days you basically throw the whole patch pump in the trash can. On the other hand it's very easy to switch from the Omnipod 
to a different system if you change your mind. You just stop ordering the parts and you're out. The T-Slim X2 has a 4 year lifetime. The only thing you need to replace every 3 days are the cartridges and the infusion sets. But it's not that easy to switch to a different pump once you sign a 4 year contract with Tandem. So you will most likely end up using the T-Slim for the full 4 years. Another difference between these two pumps is the size of the reservoir. T-Slim stores the insulin in a bladder system, which has a capacity of 300 units. The minimum fill the system requires is 50 units. The reservoir volume of Omnipod 5 is 200 units, with a minimum fill of 85 units. So if you're someone who needs a lot of insulin or very little insulin, T-Slim might be a better option for you. Another massive difference between these two pumps is how you control them. The T-Slim X2 pump has a colored touchscreen, which you can use to give yourself insulin, change the pump setting and basically do everything else. The Omnipod 5 on the other hand has no touchscreen and no buttons. The pump can be fully controlled from your smartphone or a controller which you can get in the starter kit. T-Slim X2 cannot be fully controlled from a smartphone. Tandem's T-Connect app can be only used to view the data data from your pump and in the US you can give yourself bolus using the T-Connect app but you cannot fully control the pump from the phone. By the way, what I really like about the T-Slim X2 is that it's almost impossible to forget the pump somewhere. Like it's impossible to leave it at home because you're hooked to it all the time <laughs> with the infusion set. I also really love that anytime I want to check my blood sugar, I just reach into my pocket and press the wake button. That's it. Whenever I want to eat something or give myself insulin, I just pull up the pump and do it. With Omnipod 5 and a smartphone or this controller, it's actually a completely different user experience because it's not hooked up to me and it really happened to me many times that I forgot it at home. And whenever I just want to quickly check my blood sugar, I need to pull up my phone out of my pocket and something else on the phone might grab my attention. I often end up doing something completely different that I wanted to do on my phone and I completely forget that I actually wanted to check my blood sugar. Now to be fair, both of these systems have really powerful algorithms and these algorithms adjust your basal insulin delivery. So you don't need to check your blood sugar all the time. The system and the algorithms are built in a way to keep the blood sugar in the control. That's kind of the point. But I personally like to look at the blood sugar quite often. Now one more thing about the T-Slim X2. The display of the pump is really good looking and the touchscreen is very responsive. But you simply get better touchscreen experience with a controller or smartphone and the Omnipod 5. And what's really cool about the Omnipod 5 is that the algorithm resides inside the pot. So even if you forget your controller at home, the pot will still adjust your basal insulin dose depending on how your blood sugar is trending. You'll just not be able to bolus or change your settings without this controller. Next we need to talk about battery life. The T-Slim has a USB rechargeable battery. From my experience I can go for about 4 to 6 days while using Bluetooth to read data from my continuous glucose monitor which is great. But the pump also takes an hour to fully charge and during that time you need to be hooked up with a cord to a socket or a USB bank. The battery in the Omnipod 5 controller lasts for about two days, sometimes even less while using Bluetooth to read data from my continuous glucose monitor. If you use your phone, you can be sure that the Omnipod 5 app will cause some additional battery drain. But on the other hand, the pod itself, which you have on your body, doesn't need to be connected to anything. You're just charging the remote controller and that's a completely different experience and it's a lot easier. Now before we get to the most exciting things about these devices and that's the algorithms, I want to talk a little bit about the side change process. As I already mentioned, Omnipod 5 is disposable and it officially lasts 72 hours. Now it will let you go for another 8 hours but then it will completely shut off and it will force you to do a side change after 8 hours. With T-Slim X2 you should also change the infusion site every 3 days but you have a little bit more flexibility because the pump doesn't force you to anything. Even if you go 4 or 5 days the pump kind of doesn't know about it. Now a big plus of T-Slim X2 is that you have a choice when it comes to infusion sets. You can choose between Autosoft 90 
with soft cannula and a 90 degree angle, also soft 30 with soft cannula and a 30 degree angle, very soft, which has a variable angle soft cannula, or true steel, which uses an actual needle. With Omnipod 5 you only have one choice, and that's the soft cannula that's part of the pot. Now I don't have complaints about any of these cannulas, but I know that some people prefer the true steel, prefer steel cannulas, because they are more gentle to the skin tissue. And with Omnipod 5 there are no steel cannulas, so just keep that in mind if you're one of those people. Now in general you can use the same infusion sites with both pumps, your abdomen, legs, lower back, arms and upper buttocks. But I noticed that there are sites that are not very practical to be used with Omnipod 5 and there are other sites that are not very practical to be used with t -Slim X2 at least for me. For example my lower back because when I lie on my bed or travel on an airplane uh, the pot on my back gets in the way a lot more than the T-Slim infusion set which is a lot sleeker than the pot. On the other hand it's super convenient to wear my Omnipod on my arm but placing an infusion set of a tube pump on my arm is a nightmare because I have no idea what I would do with the tubing. Another thing I want to talk about is the insulin waste and there are two ways to look at this. Omnipod 5 is tubeless so the insulin waste during the priming process is less than the T-Slim, where there will always be some unused insulin left in the tubing when you dispose of an old infusion set. On the other hand, Omnipod also has a hard stop every 80 hours, so you might end up in a situation where you will still have quite a bit of unused insulin left in the pot, which will probably be wasted. T-Slim doesn't have a hard stop, so you can always delay the cartridge change a little bit longer to use most of the insulin in the cartridge. Now if you're in an emergency situation you can always pull the unused insulin from the cartridge of both pumps and reuse it but keep in mind that the insulin will go bad at some point so only do this at your own risk. Another thing to consider when picking your infusion site is your CGM sensor. To get the most out of the algorithm you need a constant data transfer from the sensor to the pump but the blood glucose information from the sensor is sent via Bluetooth and as you might know Bluetooth signal doesn't travel very well through the human body. That's why it's really important to have the sensor and the pump in one line of sight. That way your body doesn't block the signal. With Omnipod 5 you need to think about this proactively whenever you're applying a new pot or a new sensor. Once you place your Omnipod here and your Dexcom here, the signal will be traveling very poorly and there is nothing you can do about it once the pot is applied. The only thing you can do is to take it off and apply a new pot and you just wasted the pot. With the tandem pump it's a lot easier because you can move it around, you can take it out of one pocket and put it to another pocket. Now speaking of CGM sensors, both Omnipod and T-Slim X2 currently work with Dexcom G6, but this will change soon. Both companies are working on integrating Dexcom G7 and Freestyle Libre 2 in late 2023 or early 2024 and I expect Freestyle Libre 3 to follow. Tandem seems to be slightly ahead of Insulet on integrating these additional sensors so they might be able to launch them earlier but we will see. And now we're moving to the most exciting part of this video. We'll talk about the algorithms. The Omnipod 5 and the T-Slim X2 both look at your current blood glucose value from the CGM your glucose trend and they make adjustments to your basal rate based on your predicted future glucose. Depending on where you're at and how your blood sugar is trending, they might give you more insulin, less insulin or even shut off the insulin delivery completely if you're dropping too fast. You can use both pumps in a manual mode too, but I'm mostly going to talk about the automated mode because that's what I used 99% of the time. It's what I think the most reasonable thing to do with these smart pumps. The Omnipod 5 is using the smart adjust algorithm and the T-Slim X2 is using control IQ algorithm. Now both of these algorithms are super smart but they are also very different. One of the key differences is that the Omnipod 5 algorithm is adaptive. Every time you put on a new pod it learns about you and the system should get better with every pod. As your lifestyle changes the system adapts with you and it makes changes to your basal rate automatically. Tandem doesn't have an adaptive algorithm. It uses basal rates that you set up manually as a baseline and never adjust them. If you want to adjust the baseline basal rates you need to do that manually with Tandem.
Tandem. Now here is what it means in real life. I had a very smooth transition to Tandem's Control IQ. It instantly improved my blood sugar and it increased my time in range from day one. With Omnipod 5, I had completely different experience. I had a quite rocky start and I hear that from many people that they have a rocky start because the system needs quite a bit of time to learn your body and your insulin needs. My blood sugars were running high with the Omnipod 5 and my time in range was terrible at the beginning. It took at least a week, maybe a couple weeks for the algorithm to learn and get the blood sugar under control and time in range back to where it was when I started. And I think the main reason why the onboarding with the Control IQ was way easier was that I already knew my optimal basal rates and the system basically took them over and started using them as a baseline. The Omnipod 5 system is designed to use only the total insulin dose as a baseline. And at the beginning it was very conservative. It was actually giving me 25% less total insulin per day than it was my normal dose. It was not giving me enough insulin at the beginning. It did start giving me more insulin after it learned more about my body, but the first two weeks were quite tough. So from my experience, getting started with Control IQ, way easier than getting started with Smart Adjust. Another difference between the algorithms is that the Omnipod 5 lets you set your glucose target range. You can set it anywhere between 110 and 150 milligrams per deciliter. And you can have eight different profiles throughout the day with different target glucose. For example, a lower target in the night where you sleep and a higher target in the afternoon when you are running errands. With the T-Slim X2, there is no way to set the target blood sugar. Control IQ is programmed to target a range between 112 and 160 milligrams per deciliter and a range between 112 and 120 milligrams per deciliter while in the sleep mode. You can switch to the sleep mode manually or have the pump turn it on and off at a pretty fine time of day. Now, all these target ranges look great on the paper, but it's just a theory. So let's look at how the algorithm actually does this and how it works in real life. Omnipod 5 predicts what your glucose will be in 60 minutes into the future based on your current glucose and trend. Depending on that, it can increase, decrease or completely shut off your basal insulin delivery while trying to achieve the target glucose in 60 minutes. Tandem's Control IQ only looks 30 minutes into the future and it basically does the same thing with the only exception. It can also give you a correction bolus every 60 minutes when it predicts that your blood sugar in 30 minutes will be above 180 milligrams per deciliter. Now, from my experience, the fact that Omnipod 5 looks 60 minutes into the future makes it a more proactive algorithm. It's like an ocean liner. It makes any changes very slowly and very smoothly because there is always enough time to achieve that target glucose. There is a 60 minute time and it works with a 60 minute time frame. I have less swings in my glucose graph with the Omnipod 5. Control IQ is more reactive Active, and it doesn't take that much time to react. It's more like a jet ski. Now Omnipod 5 is extremely good at preventing low blood sugars. I almost never have hypos with Omnipod 5. On the other hand, I feel that sometimes it's too conservative and it takes forever to correct high blood sugar. From my experience, T-Slim X2 is better at correcting high blood sugars. And I think it's probably because of the correction boluses it's giving every 60 minutes when needed. On the other hand, Control IQ is not as good at preventing lows when I compare it to Omnipod 5. By the way, both systems have an activity mode, which you can turn on to avoid going low during times when you exercise. When in exercise mode, the Control IQ automatically targets a range between 140 and 160. Omnipod 5's target is set at 150 so practically identical. The only slight advantage of Omnipod 5 is that I can turn on the activity mode for a specific number of hours and it turns off automatically once the time is over. With T-Slim X2, I need to turn off the exercise mode manually. And if you like me, you might forget to do it sometimes. The key to success while exercising, at least for me, is to turn on the activity mode well in advance of the exercise. That way I can almost always keep my blood sugar in the target range. Another topic we absolutely need to talk about is bolusing because no matter how the algorithms are, it is still up to you 
to give the premium bolus right. But both systems have a very sophisticated bolus calculator to help you. When the T-Slim X2 calculates your bolus, it takes into account the amount of carbs you're planning to eat. It includes a correction up or down depending on your current blood sugar number. And it also considers any insulin you already have on board. The Omnipod 5 Smart Bolus Calculator does all this too. But on top of that, it also looks at your blood sugar trend and the blood sugar prediction 60 minutes into the future. And as a result of that, each bolus is automatically adjusted depending on if your glucose is trending upwards or downwards. This is quite cool and I like the Smart Bolus because it does a little bit of thinking for me. Now, one thing I love about the T-Slim X2 is the extended bolus feature. I can basically tell the pump what percentage of the bolus I want to give right away and what percentage of the insulin I want to be delivered later on over a defined period of time. And I can do that even while in auto mode. If you ever ate pizza, you probably know what this is good for. Omnipod 5 doesn't have the extended bolus feature available in the auto mode. It's only available in the manual mode. They say that the smart adjust algorithm is smart enough to handle slowly absorbed meals, but I would definitely like to have more control over this. Another nice feature of T-Slim X2 is the quick bolus which you can initiate without looking at any screen. You just use the top button and your pump can stay hidden in your pocket. With Omnipod 5, you always have to look at your controller screen while giving bolus. But this is not a big deal, at least for me. I want to share a few more key observations, which I think could really help you decide which system is better for you. But before I do that, I just want to say that all the smart features of both of these two systems are really amazing. What I enjoy the most is that whenever I get busy living my life, I don't need to concern myself with my diabetes very much. The algorithms take over and I know that my blood sugar will stay in the range for most of the time. A quick reality check. The main thing that could and probably will cause these systems to not work as well as they could is incorrect initial settings and you forgetting to bolus before meals. With T-Slim X2, you have more control because you can change the basal rates anytime you want. With Omnipod 5 in auto mode, you don't get to change or adjust the basal rates. You need to fully rely on the algorithm. So if you're someone who likes to be in control, make a lot of changes and know what the system is doing all the time, Control IQ might be a better system for you. Because let's be honest, you might not have enough patience to wait for the Omnipod 5 to learn your body and not know exactly what the system is doing to the T. On the other hand, if you prefer the algorithm to make little changes to your basal rates as your lifestyle changes, Changes, and you don't mind not knowing 100% of all the things that are happening, controlling all the details, Omnipod 5 might be a better system for you. If you can let go for a couple of weeks and let the algorithm do its job, Omnipod 5 can do that really well. I personally was able to achieve time in range above 85% and most of the time in the 90s with both of these systems. And my HbA1c was constantly around the 6% mark without significant efforts with both Omnipod 5 and Tandem's Control IQ. There were no major differences in the overall time in range and HbA1c in the long term. But I will say that I needed completely different settings and completely different ratios like insulin to carb ratio, correction ratio, and the distribution between bolus and basal insulin with these two systems. I will put the main ratios on the screen right now so that you can see how they are different between T-Slim X2 and Omnipod 5. But please keep in mind that everyone is different and what works for me might not work for you. This is by no means medical advice. Now, one thing I noticed was that my blood sugar fluctuates less and I have less hypos with Omnipod 5. This system is extremely good at preventing lows. It likes the steady state blood sugar and it's quite slow at correcting highs. With the T-Slim X2 and Control IQ, I see definitely more spikes in my blood sugar. I get more hypos, but sometimes I feel like I'm more in control. I can make changes to my basal rates whenever I want to, and I don't need to wait for the system to learn something. I don't need to wait for the AI to catch up. Question is, is it a good thing or a bad thing? I will leave that up to you to decide. The system, when you let it work on its own, it can be better than a human. On the other hand, it's kind of like a mental game, whether you are willing to put yourself fully in the adaptive algorithm hands 
or if you want to be in control and I think it's a big question for everyone to answer. Now I'm excited to reveal my choice between these two systems in a minute but before I do that I want to share something super important. While both of these pumps offer incredible benefits, let's face it, they are not perfect. And that's where you come in. And I'm super excited because there is now an easy way how you can share your diabetes expertise and even get paid for it through an organization called DQNA. All members of the DQNA community are paid to answer quarterly diabetes surveys while learning about new diabetes products and services. I myself have been contributing to the DQNA surveys for a while and I know for a fact that these surveys have influenced the development of over 190 devices and therapies. So if you want your voice to be heard, please, please do me a favor and sign up for the survey at the DQNA website. Link is down below. And huge thanks to DQNA for all they do and for making this video possible. So which system am I gonna use for now? You know, the main reason for my choice was that I really enjoyed the freedom of not having a tube and not wearing a pump in my pocket all the time. I love how small and discreet the Omnipod 5 is. The algorithm works reasonably well and it helped me avoid a lot of hypos. I will say though that there are a few things I don't love about the Omnipod 5. I think the algorithm is a bit too conservative sometimes and I really miss the extended bolus. That's why I'm also considering trying the loop with Omnipod Dash, but more about that in another video. Guys, if you have any questions for me or if you want to chat one-on-one -on -one, you can sign up for my patreon or you can book a coaching session links are down below and I respond to everyone and before you make the final decision on your next insulin pump please go watch my full reviews of both Omnipod 5 and T-Slim X2 I will put them both right here don't forget to join the DQNA community and I will see you next time ciao